With us now is a loving couple, Nancy and Mike Zorick. And Nancy is his loving companion, and Mike, you are her loving companion. You've been together so long. What's interesting, Mike, is that you were blind at birth. So uh, if you're just closing your eyes, I just wanted to let the audience know that. So uh, there we go. So welcome audience, and we're gonna be talking to Nancy and Mike Zorick. Welcome to both of you. So nice to have you here. Thank you. Nice to be here. So uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this Nancy first, which is this book, uh, and it's about by Edna Zorick. Yes, okay. Mike's mom. Okay. Yeah, she wrote it, and she used to tell Mike's brother and Mike the story, and it was a sweet story, so she wanted me to illustrate it. And a publisher called me up and wanted me to uh, give them Edna's phone number because they liked the story, but they didn't. W they had their own illustrators. Okay. So Edna told them, "Well, I like the way Nancy illustrated the book. What would you do different?" And she said, "Well, we just want to change the expression of the little acorn's face." And Edna said, "No, I'm not doing it." And they said, "Don't you know how hard it is to get a book published?" And she said, "I love it." Don't you know how hard it is to good, get a good daughter-in-law? Oh, that's adorable. So yeah. obviously she's yeah. been a proponent and a supporter of yours from the get-go. Oh, so yes. uh, Nancy, Very you're an supportive. artist. You're an artist. Yes. And then Mike, how did the two of you meet? How did you meet your lovely wife? We met, uh, I needed a reader to read my mail, actually. I was living by myself. And uh, Nancy worked for, uh, volunteer work for a religious organization the foundation of human understanding and there was a card up there and uh, Nancy read to this girl named Shirley and Shirley gave Nancy my phone number and I called Just her. the opposite, she gave you my phone number. I yeah, didn't okay. Know who he was, he just called out of the blue. Yeah, right. It was June 23rd, 1978 and uh, so uh, I called her and see if she would uh, help me with uh, reading my mail. And I was training for the national wrestling finals in uh, Iowa City, which were coming up the following month. And uh, so uh, Nancy helped me, she read my mail and she even took me running. She rode a bike while I ran next to her. I was running uh, six to 10 miles a day to get my weight down for a wrestling tournament. So Mike, you just mentioned a couple of things. One, track and wrestling. So you have a great track record, but um bum bum pun intended, <laughs> um, and you've accomplished a lot as a wrestler. So you had shared with me on the phone that you've been blind since birth because you had a low premature uh, birth weight and they gave you too much oxygen. That's correct. Okay. How did you decide to become a renowned um, I guess wrestler. How did that start for you? How did that somebody say, well, you know what, you're blind, but it's okay, you can wrestle? My parents encouraged me to get into some sport. Okay. Because they felt that blind people would be less active than the sighted world because there's more opportunities for the sighted world. So I got into wrestling in the sixth grade and I won the 70 to 79 pound class. And uh, so then after that, I was on my way. And I, I wrestled for 30 years competitively. And I've placed in the Nationals 10 times. And this is the sighted Nationals. I was the only blind wrestler. I mean, you've made quite, quite a profound uh, change in so many people's lives. You even have this book, which is called Making Weight by Mike Zorick. So it says, did you ever wonder what it's like to be blind? This book is about the life of a 45-year-old blind athlete. There will be happy stories, sad stories, and funny stories, and there will be problems and their solutions. So I believe, Mike, if, I guess what I could say is that you love to be an advocate for both the sighted and the unsighted. Absolutely. Yes. And to have them work together as one uh, because they don't know my world and I don't know their world. So if I could put my world out there for people to see and for people to read, then uh, people would have a better understanding of my world. 
So there are 31 chapters and it's so beautiful um, in terms of like how you start it and certain things that have happened along the way. Can you just share with us like one sad story so that we could really get to know you a little bit better? One sad story? Sure. Oh, uh, when I was in uh, high school, I got a ton of sad stories. Uh, but I'll tell you one that was really devastating. Okay. I was uh, second in the state in Connecticut. I was ranked second in the state in the 60s when I came up in high school. And uh, the committee involved, they didn't want a blind wrestler to win the state tournament. So they not only kicked me out, they kicked my whole school out so that I wouldn't have the opportunity to win the state tournament. That still bothers you. Uh, it, it's hard to tell that story. I know. And I that's know. happened like uh, 56 years ago. Mm -hmm. I came into wrestling practice in the 63-64 season and my coach, the first thing he said to me, uh, said, Zorik, you're too good. Mm -hmm. And then he explained it and oh my gosh. You know, it cost me a scholarship. I cer certainly would have gotten a scholarship to a college if they had allowed me to compete in a state tournament. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Um, and I thank you for being brave enough to share that story even though it's still painful. Um, tell me now a happy story. What is, what's, what's a happy moment for you? I like it how you went up against that bully, Mike. That's kind of happy ending, I think. Well, would you like to share that story that Nancy mentioned? Uh, yeah, that okay. was a, that was a story that it's not involved with wrestling, but it uh, happened when I was in fourth grade. And when I was growing up, my father told me that I was the smallest kid and being blind, the bullies would be after me. Mm -hmm. So one day I, I was used to be live in Connecticut and I was walking around the block and uh, this guy pushed me in the mud. And I caught myself on my elbow and I grabbed him and I pulled him down and we were both laying in the mud on our stomachs and I recognized his voice. He was a neighborhood bully. And when I was 11 years old, I only weighed 54 pounds to show you how small I was. And I pu pulled a strand of his hair and when he screamed, I reached down on the ground picked up a handful of mud and I shoved it in his mouth. Ooh, give him a mud pie, a good mud pie, huh? And after the second handful, he said, oh, I don't want any more. Oh, yes. And my father used to tell me, if, you, if a guy fights you twice, you did a lousy job the first time. <laughs> and another thing he told me was, don't get your emotions involved, just do it like it's a chore. Okay. But. I didn't want to fight him again, so I gave him six handfuls of mud. <laughs> and uh, I told him the next time he bothers me is going to be worse. So he left me alone. Good. So your parents helped you and in then, a way. Uh, when, so I'm not finished with the story. No, that's okay. And then uh, somebody else was going to fight him. He was going to fight somebody else. And the kid said, don't fight with me. Why don't you fight with Mike, mud mouth? So after people started calling him Mudmouth, he stopped being a bully. So your parents were always supportive of you. And then when you married Nancy, obviously they've been supportive of Nancy. Um, you have won a ton of medals and a ton of things. Is there one that you're most proud of, Mike? Uh, it has to be either uh, the first time I got second place in the Open Greco-Roman Nationals or uh, winning the Veterans Nationals, and it's never been a blind national champ, so I was really happy to win that. And since I was a teenager, I always wanted to be a state champion and a national champion, and I've accomplished both of them. And it's, you know, we're talking about all-sided competition. Yeah. yeah. What would you like to say to uh, the parents of children that are currently, you know, they're, that they're blind? What advice would you give them? Well, don't give up. And one thing I'll tell you what helped me, believe it or not, was people telling me that I could never compete against sighted competition. And what happened with that, it made me work harder. Mm. And uh, 
they actually help me get better. Stronger and better and more competitive. Right. What's on the horizon for you now, Mike? I really don't know. I enjoy doing talk radio. Okay. Uh, I love the show I'm doing now. And uh, BBM Radio Global Network has been wonderful to me. When I was in college, I got so many rejections for oh. trying to be a teacher, mm -hmm. more than 300. Yeah. And I'd say at least half of them was because of my eyes. Yeah. And maybe probably even more than that. And these people on BBM Global Network never considered my eyes. They considered uh, the fact that I was qualified and uh, I was actually less, uh, more apprehensive than they were <laughs> because uh, my technology skills are a disaster. And I knew I could do the radio part of this show, but I didn't know about the technology. And uh, it's, it's been a wonderful experience for me. And Thank Tom you. and Ed are just, I'm so grateful for them. Thank you very, very much. And Nancy, what's on the horizon for you as an artist? Well, I just heard about that agent. I showed him my picture, so who knows? Who knows? I, so I am from Chicago. Oh, very nice. I didn't know that. The Windy City. So congratulations on your long-term uh, love with one another. We wish you much success. And uh, Mike, I also know that you're a piano player, and perhaps you'd like to play us out. So what I'm going to do yeah. is just tell our audience to stay tuned. Mike does many concerts all over the I've place. I've 27 solo concerts. 27 solo concerts. This is his and book, Making Weights. I have to memorize between 100 and 120 pages of sheet music before <laughs> each concert. Yeah, because I guess they don't make sheet music in Braille, do they, Mike? They do, but you can't, you can't play, play at the same, at the same time. time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the little acorn. So uh, stay tuned for more. We're going to be listening to the beautiful sounds of Mike Zorix. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Zorick. For more empowering stories, please go to his website. This is Mike Zorick right here on The Donna Drake Show. Stay tuned.